All right, we are now getting more advanced. Use standard list controllers. So previously, we are able to display a record one at a time using just a standard controller of the object. Now we are wanting to use a list, a standard list controllers. All right, so let's go ahead and do just that. I'm going to pop up my hands on orgs, go to my developer trailhead playground and pop up my developer console to be ready and let's go back to the trail. So displaying a list of records. So if we check on the code here, um, let's just create the, the page first. It's called contact list. So file, you should know by now, new visual force page and contact list. Okay, let's copy this. Boom. Copy that and paste it here. So the standard controller is the contact object. Now we have a new parameter or properties, which is record set variable or record set var. You can name this whatever you want. It doesn't have to be context, all right? I can change this to cons, but then you have to change this as cons as well. So, and then this is just a title contact list and then you actually um, loop through the context it's a page block table right page block table the value is cons which is from here from the record set var and then you also have your own variable for the loop on the page block table which is ct again you can name whatever you want on this variable. Now CT is going to loop through these fields and display first name, last name, email, and account name. So let's save this and take a look what it's going to look like. Wait until the star is gone. Star is gone. And then hit the preview. Oh, it's blankety blank. So let's pass on the ID from any of the contacts you have to initiate the list, okay? Let's pass on the ID here. If I go back there and I choose, I'm just gonna take this out, and, um, or ID equals, boom, look at that. Now it's working as expected. So if you have a blank, just pass the ID like that onto your page, right? So let's move on. Go back to our trailhead. So we see this displaying, but on this trail, it doesn't say that you really have to pass the ID. Make sure you actually do that, okay? All right, so now we can add list view filtering to the list list view filtering to the list. So I'm going to copy the final code over here and flip back to here and oopsie, paste it here and save it. Let's talk about the filter. So we have the same thing. Now we have a filter after the page block here. We have a filter which is using the Apex select list tag value is filter id the size is one and then select options the value of the options the options is the drop down list view options how how do you know to use this this is the default standard controller so whenever you want to do a list of filter this is how you do it there is no other way because these functions are defined within the standard controller, all right? So that's how it is. So this is the action support on change. When you change the view, 
re-render contact list. What, is, what is re render means? Re render means reload the contact list page block. This is contact list. See, re render the block with has which has an ID of contact list, which is basically this whole thing here. So if you change the drop down, re render it. So let's take a look. Okay. So now we see um, a filter on our page here. You can change this to all contacts, right? So when this is changed, the on change event triggers new this week, new last week. We don't have any recently view contacts there. So on change, right? If I go back here, so on change of that list um, option, when you change it, we re-render this whole page block, this whole page block here, reload this whole page block. So this is the page block here. This whole thing is the page block, right? Reload the whole thing. So if I change this to birthday this month, do we even have to Jane? Right, it's reloading that whole page. Okay, so that's basically what it's doing. Now let's move on. We have played with the filter. Now we can, oh yeah, there's um, an action support here, which we are actually talking about, action support. So when there is a change or an event here, re-render, you tell them what to do, okay? So add pagination to the list. So let's add this, okay? I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna add this below the contact list page block table, below the page block table. Uh, page block table is here, all right? So just below it, I'm gonna put it here, boom. And probably tidy it up like that. So it's creating a table with three column, column one, column two, and column three, right? So I'm gonna save this, flip back here. So you don't see anything yet, all right? If I change this to all contacts, you don't see the, but there is a table, but it's still blank. Now let's add some content on these three columns by going back here. So we are going to first um, add a page X of Y. We're going to copy this and put it here. There, page X of Y. So I'm gonna make it tidy a bit there. So the next one we are going to copy here. So it's going to um, at the previous and next page. This one here, I'm going to put it here and paste and command A, shift tab. So it's gonna tidy up for you, all right? And the last one, I'm going to copy this guy, records per page and paste it here. Same thing, command A, shift tab there and I'm going to save it. So let's see first what it's going to look like now. See, page one of one, but if I change this to all contacts, page one of two now, we have two pages because records per page is 20. I'm gonna change this to five. See, page one of eight, pretty cool, right? Next, 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 next until it reached the end of the page and this will be grayed out. Boom, you can't click it anymore, see, right? So how do you do that? Let's go back to the code. So this code is just displaying the page number, right? Value is the page number of result size divided by page size. So this is coming from the standard controller. So I'm gonna tidy this up so it goes like that page number is the page number right now ceiling is the 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 top 
make it a ceiling, the result size divided by a page size. So you have the current page. Now, the next and the previous link. Action is a standard control action, previous. The value is what displays there, what displays there. You know, the arrow is just the display. So if I do that, it will always, it, it will also add the dot dot there. If I want to do that, right? So if I want to add the next also, uh, previous, previous, next, if I want to add that, like add an arrow. If I save that, it's going to add an arrow over here. See, it has an arrow now, right? So if I change to all contacts and change this to five again, now it has an arrow. So that's, that's the label of it, right? So action, basically going to previous or next, but only display the this one if it has a previous. Otherwise, display this one if it doesn't have a previous. What does, what's the difference? The difference is the color there, right? The style, it's adding color, all right? And this is a link when it has a previous, it's a link. When it doesn't have a previous, it's just a text. So you cannot click on it. So like this one, page one doesn't have a previous. No, it's just a text output text and the color is gray, right? When it has a previous like this, it has a previous, change it to a link. So that's what it's doing. Render this, so render this, if it doesn't have a previous, so not has previous, and this is, if it has a previous, make it a link. The exact same thing for the next page, all right? If it has a next, make it a link. If it doesn't have a next, just a text with a color gray, grayish. And then this is just displaying the records per page, which we can change, right? And if it's changed, re-render the whole block again. If you change it, re-render the whole block, the whole page block, which is from here. Re-render means reload without reloading the whole thing, just that section, which is pretty cool. So, like, when we change this back to 20, it's re-rendering the whole thing, right? So what if you, you add 10 here? You can, right? Ten and ten, tidy this up and flip back here. Now we can have ten. Well, birthday, all contacts, ten pages, right? That's better. So that's what it's doing. So we are at the end of this particular section. Do we have? I think that's the end of it, right? So we have previous. Yep, tell me more. Of course, if you want to learn more about all the kinds of tags Visual Force have, you go to the reference guide here and go here, Apex page, and you can see all these available tags that you see here on the left. This is all the Apex tags you can use. Page block, page block buttons, page block section, section item, table, message, messages, and so on and so on. Repeat, variable, vote even. Look at all this available stuff, okay? I recommend you to please um, have a view, take a browse. And next up is the hands-on challenge, which we will do on a separate video hit that subscribe button and explore new trailhead grounds and learn to implement the most useful and popular apps on the Salesforce app exchange. And do yourself a favor, like this video and you'll be surprised on how much more you understand when watching this same video after liking it, don't take my word, 
watch this one more time after you like the video and see it for yourself. Bada bing, bada boom. Thank <laughs> you.